Howdy banger fans, Blaine Smith welcoming you to another episode of Metal Monthly, banger's monthly look at what's coming out in metal releases. It is May 2020, oh boy I'm excited, it's getting nice out and we've got, uh, to be honest, a really heavy month. This month is almost all heavy releases. As always, we kick this thing off by listing some of the new big or noteworthy releases coming out in the month. Uh, maybe we'll review some of these, maybe we'll cover them, maybe not. Uh, you know, you can always let us know if there's something you're really stoked about down in the comments below. So without further ado, some albums you might want to keep an eye out for in May. Starting with May 6th. It's not quite metal, but it's metal adjacent when we listen to it. And it's actually quite good. The new Christian Death album, Evil Becomes Rule on Season of Mist. Uh, they can't be stopped. Sabaton is releasing the Symphony to End All Wars on Nuclear Blast. Silverstein is releasing Misery Made Me on Unified. Uh, uh, Three Days Jace is releasing Explosions on RCA. UFO Mammoth is releasing Fenice, Fenice, Fenice on Neurot. Uh, UFO Mammoth adjacent band Wofat is releasing The Singularity on Ripple. May 13th, we've got, ooh, oh, just Black Metal Perfection in Aura's Triad 2, Hemera on Debure Morty Productions. Jungle Rock is releasing a call to arms on Unique Leader. Uh, Master Boot Record is releasing Personal Computer on Metal Blade. Misery Index is releasing Complete Control on Century Media. And Primitive Man is releasing the Insurmountable EP on Closed Casket. Uh, as a random day, May 14th, the, the prolific man himself in Haunt is releasing Windows of Your Heart. That's an independent release because, boy, that guy can crank out some tunes. Um, May 20th, we've got Anvil releasing Impact is Imminent on AFM. Unfortunately, the cover is not nearly the work of art that their previous album was. Angel smoking an Anvil bong. Can't get better than that. Uh, Blue Dots Nord is releasing Disharmonium, uh, Undreamable Abysses on Debra Morty. Uh, Caven is releasing Heavy Pendulum on Relapse. Malevolence is releasing Malicious Intent on Nuclear Blast slash uh, Malevolent Limited. Uh, Septic Flesh is releasing Modern Primitive on Nuclear Blast. May 27th, uh, Decapitated is releasing the unfortunately titled Cancer Culture on Nuclear Blast. Uh, Def Leppard is Diamond Star haloing their way to a new record on UME. Uh, Lord Belial is releasing Rapture on Hammerheart. Metal Cat will be excited about that. Michael Shankar Group is releasing Universal on term Atomic Fire. And uh, Mournful Congregation is releasing the Exuvier of Gods Part 1 EP on Osmos. And if you really want to get out there, Trollfest is releasing Flamingo Overlord on Napalm. So that's it for big releases. Uh, without further ado, though, we get on to my list of my top five choices of underground metal picks that you absolutely have to hear. Up first, I always like to single out a spectacular mwah release of the month, the one that kind of really gets me going the most, and that is Obscene from Dead Horizon to Dead Horizon. It's coming out on Blood Harvest May 27th, and it is some fantastic death metal for you. Have a listen. <laughs> Thanks to Indianapolis for that. And thanks to uh, Skadvalder for the art and layout. Oh man, there's like a certain level of jank, there's a certain level of grime, and there's a certain level of awesomeness that all just come together to make this the perfect cover. I love a cover that looks like that. Woo! And I love this band. Uh, when I first heard the single, I was like, ooh, I know exactly what this band is like. They're dummies, and I'm here for how dumb they are. But surprisingly, the record is way more varied than I guess it would sound from the single and cover. They're not dummies at all. They tricked me, and I'm happy they did because this is like uh, almost like a sampler, like a, mm, a little bit of different types of death metal, but all through the filter that this band's able to manage to establish a sound for them so quickly. Uh, there's some parts that are, yeah, just dummy knuckle dragging death metal. There's some melodic parts, there's some atmospheric parts. They really are managed to do it all, but it all manages to sound like obscene at the same time. Very cool, very impressive to see a new band like this do that. And just wanna shout out especially uh, Kyle Shaw's vocals. He's got a young Thomas Lindbergh thing going on, that in the prime, that voice we all love. and. 
yeah, just what a cool record. Absolutely perfectly paced every time they slow down, put a little bit of atmospherics in there. The next song is an absolute romp and a bop. Totally amazing, totally awesome. There's even like a nice outro. When do I ever say that? So I love pacing, I love well organized things. So we started fast, let's go slow with Famine to the ground below on Spart Records May 13th. Have some UK doom. Yeah, I don't know what it is about the UK that makes Doom hit differently, but ooh, ooh, it's good. So what you're getting in here is, again, kind of like the last record, more varied than you'd expect. The first two tracks are downright fast for Doom, uh, and uh, drummer Michael Ross really gets to stretch his legs out. It's rare that you think drumming on a Doom album is like, oh man, getting me amped up, but here it is. Uh, he can play fast. He can play slow. I know it's hard to play slow, but it's hard to play fast too, and he does both. Um, but my real story here is in vocalist Tom Vane. He basically sounds like if women didn't break up with Patrick Walker. Uh, he's a downright happy Patrick Walker because he sounds the most like Patrick Walker from Warning uh, when he's singing fast. And Patrick Walker like never has sung fast in his life. So hey, we get a little side of Warning that we never knew we wanted. Uh, there's a, like I said, a lot of variety in this record. There's like a psychedelic track at the end with a great solo. There's a stoner track. And then there's a submarine, which is a weird, like quasi jazzy song that I'm going to say it. I'm going to make a declaration. If I'm ever on a submarine and want to hear a doom song, this is at the top of my playlist. It's the only song on the submarine doom playlist for me right now. I don't know if there's any else to add, but add this record to your collection. It's fantastic. Uh, you get a lot more instrumentation than you normally get on Doom Records. So if that's your thing, boom, a little extra for you too. Well, here's a type of album I never thought I'd feature. It's, I mean, it's strongly death, but we got some gore grind in Metal Monthly for maybe the first time ever. It's Cartilage with The Deader, The Better. Comes out on May 13th. Have a listen. This type of music, not normally my thing, but a great way to explain why it is, is the album cover. It is simultaneously both a weird, gory, obscene, gah, but also it's like fun and colorful and has a silly vibe to it. And I think that kind of alleviates the normal, way too much of gore grind where it's like, hey, uh, do you want to hear about a murder? And you're like, okay. And they're like, what if we also put the victim on the album cover? And you're like, dude, I'm trying to live stream this on Twitch because we live stream the research for this very uh, show on Twitch at twitch.tv slash metal comedy. But I can show this album cover because it's not a actual murder scene. And that's kind of what you get in the album. There's a lot of like fun going on here and there's silliness and it's not they're trying to push the line just to push the line and you also get a really wholesome thing in that uh, you have two members vocalist Mark Wallace and guitar player Teresa Wallace they have the last name because they're brother and sister so this is like a nice family and they sing back and forth and you're like oh what a nice family moment I wish their parents were on the record too. Uh, it's very fun. There's a good bop to everything. It really gets you moving. If I had to explain it, it is Death Grind Ghoul. And I'm a massive Ghoul fan, so hey, more than happy to have another band share the space in a different genre. Um, I literally never thought I'd be this happy coming out of a Gore Grind record, but I'm always happy to be proven wrong as well. So hey, y'all did it. Extra big salute to you. Bam. Well, it wouldn't be a month without a black metal album, would it? Um, we've got Sacred Sons, The Foul Death of Engelond on True Cult Records slash independent release uh, May 13th. You can't go a month without having black metal. There's always black metal. <laughs> Well, I guess we're spending a lot of time in the UK today because, yep, this is also from the UK. Uh, we've got a cover painting by Mitchell Nolte, and hey, 
You, you love to see peasants chopping off some upper dude's head. I don't care what side of the political spectrum you fall on. We should all be cool with poor people chopping off rich people's heads. I mean, I guess unless you're a rich person, then that might buy, bother you. Um, so this month's theme definitely seems to be uh, bands doing a bunch in the genre, kind of giving you a little... Hey, this is what the genre has to offer because there's some like folky stuff on here. There's some like pagan stuff on here. Um, but uh, all of it is definitely, at the end of the day, atmospheric black metal. Some great like space out stuff too. Uh, I really enjoy the whole record. Uh, and again, cheeky fun is a thing that I love. And this band started as cheeky fun because here's the band's first, well, band, the guy's first album cover so that's how he started but then i guess he realized he's good at this and should probably put a real album cover on there so people take it seriously and uh, he did that and so we have a nice record that we can take seriously and enjoy and it's a if you like atmospheric black metal it's really good it pairs really well with that r record i talked about off the top i featured them in metal monthly before and they definitely would have been here as well but hey they have talked about them enough time to shine the spotlight on someone else and that's sacred sun if you like Ara. Get it, get it, get it, get it, and then go chop somebody's head off. Don't actually do that. I'm not, you know what I mean. So we come to our palate cleanse, and surprisingly, we barely had any heavy metal this month. It was a very heavy, heavy month. So if you're on the lighter side of the listening spectrum, uh, I'm sorry, uh, but I don't know. Uh, grow some calluses on those ears, toughen up, because these are all still great records. But like I said, I do still have a palate cleanse for you, and that is... Koshamar Rosa Mystica coming out on Temple of Mystery Records May 16th. <laughs> For here, we're keeping it almost local in this Quebecois, doomy, tinged, heavy metal band. Uh, you've got an awesome album cover by Valeria Saxiva, and I also need to point out the graphic design done by the band's bassist slash vocalist, Enik Giroux, uh, because I think there's a little bit of both going on here to make this so great. And I don't know if you, whoever did the t-shirts, that is a Ooh, bang up job translating an album art to a t-shirt, but making it different and unique. Love that shirt, especially the long sleeve. Anyways, anyways um, uh, we do also need to briefly talk about Annie Jiro because she was a brief live bass player in Japanese band Barbatos. And if you're thinking of where have I heard of the band Barbatos before, uh, it would be on the Lockhorn stream we did about Black and Roll with James from Hell Ripper. And if you haven't heard of that band and didn't watch that, that's what we're doing over on twitch.tv slash banger TV. We've brought back Lockhorns. We're having some great debates over there. So I hope you come out. You can get involved. It's live. It's interactive. Uh, but right now, it's time to talk about an amazing doom-tinged heavy metal band from Quebec. Uh, in Cauchemar. Uh, this record is gorgeous. I love Annie's voice. I love the church organ synths you get in uh, Rosa Mystica, the title track. Uh, there's just a ton of really great atmosphere and really great, uh, you know, that singing in French really delivers something doomy, something good, really helps set the atmosphere for this whole record. And, uh, and they have this really cool ability to click back and forth between being like a full-on doom band and a full-on heavy metal band. And the segues aren't weird or awkward. And so you do get some slower parts, but then they are able to ramp the energy back up and kind of fill you with that heavy metal glory that helps cleanse your palate after all this heavy stuff. <sighs> Feeling good. Feeling good. Love this record. Love you guys for coming out. Thanks for watching. Like I said, hand it over to Banger TV's Twitch channel. We're doing a lot of stuff over there, and it's been really going really great. You guys have been coming out and supporting, and we really appreciate it. Uh, other than that, just sound off in the comments. What albums are you excited about? What of my picks did you like? Did you think I got something wrong? Whatever you got, I'm here for it. Let's chat. <laughs>